For this FET interactive simulation activity, we are going to be running the experiments all together. So the title of this activity is called Molecules and Light, looking at the greenhouse particles. So did you know different forms of waves on the electromagnetic spectrum affect matter in different ways? Molecules can be unaffected or spun around. Their bonds can be stretched, they can reflect or absorb light, or they can be broken down by the light. Greenhouse gases interact with EM waves from the sun and from Earth. Some forms of light are harsher than others on our ozone particles. So since we've already discussed the different types of electromagnetic waves, how they're created and their different wavelengths and how they could possibly be stopped, we're now going to look at how the different lights from the electromagnetic spectrum affect our greenhouse particles. Our greenhouse particles are the molecules that make up our atmosphere here on Earth. So the first part, it asks you to write a prediction. So what do you think? How do different lights from the electromagnetic spectrum affect our greenhouse particles? Do they get broken down? Do they reflect or absorb light? Do their bonds get stretched or do they spin around? You can make just a general prediction at this point, but make sure you fill that part in. For the procedure for this activity, you are going to work through the different particles and light forms. The blue slider on the flashlight affects the intensity of the light. Identify how each light affects, part of, affects each particle and fill in the table below. So looking at our FET simulation, you can see the different types of molecules, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen dioxide, and ozone off to the right. And down below, you can see the different types of wavelengths getting higher and higher in energy, starting with microwaves to infrared visible light, so what we see, Roy G. Biv, up to ultraviolet light. If you click on the show light spectrum, you can see what hopefully looks familiar now at this point, the entire spectrum starting with the longest wavelengths at radio, which you can see here, and slowly getting smaller and smaller or shorter and shorter wavelengths all the way up to gamma radiation. Remember, as it gets higher, the frequency increases and so does the energy of the waves. So let's begin filling in the data table, starting with the microwave column. So I'm going to keep my microwaves uh, wavelength on, and I'm going to go through each molecule, starting with carbon monoxide. So as I go along, make sure you fill in what you see for each type of wavelength and molecule reaction. Here we go. I'm going to turn on to the highest intensity. So we have microwaves shooting out at a carbon monoxide molecule. So what do you see happening to the molecule here in the center? Go ahead and fill that in the data table. Next up, we have nitrogen. Do you notice anything happening? Oxygen. Looks about the same. Make sure you fill in the table. Carbon dioxide. Still the same. What about water? So 
So one thing you should notice that's a little different than carbon monoxide, the first molecule, is that it's not only spinning, but it's also starting to reflect some of the waves. You can see it shoot off here and there. Next up, nitrogen dioxide. It's looking the same, just like water, spin, and reflect. And last, we have the ozone. Again, we have the same reaction occurring. So now you should have the entire first column finished in your data table. And we're going to move on to infrared. I'll go ahead and pause it and re refresh it. And now we're starting with infrared on carbon monoxide. So notice how the bond is jiggling, the space in between the two molecules of carbon and oxygen. So what you can fill in here is that the bond is stretching and at the same time you should hopefully notice some of the infrared wavelengths are being reflected. Next up, we have nitrogen. Oxygen. Carbon dioxide. Notice something is happening to the bond. It's stretching there, as well as being reflected, reflecting the wavelengths. Water. There you go. It doesn't happen all the time, but there is some stretching there in the bond and reflection. Nitrogen dioxide. And finally, ozone. So you should have the entire column filled in now for infrared. I'm going to pause it, reset it and this time turn it to visible. So visible, remember, is the light that we see and all the colors of the rainbow. I'm gonna turn up the intensity to high and we're looking right now at carbon monoxide. Make sure to fill in the data table as we go. Next we have nitrogen. Then we have oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen dioxide. So what you'll notice here is the molecule is brightening up. So the FET simulation is showing that some of these wavelengths, this yellow dot, is being absorbed by the molecule. So when it lights up here, that means the molecule absorbed the wavelength. And you should notice every once in a while, it reflects some of the wavelength. Last is 
the ozone molecule. So at this point, you should have the entire column completed for visible light. Going to reset it and now set it to our final column, the ultraviolet wavelength. Going to turn it up to the highest intensity for carbon monoxide. And nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide water Nitrogen dioxide, oops, what happened there? Let's return the molecule and try this again. Oops, there it goes again. I'm going to turn off the UV light, return the molecule, and turn this on and show one more time what happens. Let's go highest frequency. So clearly that molecule was destroyed. Finally, we have the ozone molecule. Oops, there it goes again. So those last two molecules were completely destroyed with UV radiation. So remember, these UV waves come from the sun, and as we know, UV radiation can cause skin cancer, which is why it's so important that we use sunscreen to block it and protect ourselves from cancer. So that is the end of filling in the data table for the FET simulation. For the last part of the assignment, you have five questions for the conclusion, and three questions for the extension. Make sure you use the data from the table that you just completed to answer your questions. Thank you very much.